It's time for On Target Radio, Chicagoland's only radio show dedicated to educating, entertaining, and discussion of firearms, legislation, and your Second Amendment rights. Presented in part by the Illinois State Rifle Association, Illinois Gun Works, Safer USA, and Chuck's Gun Shop. Here's your host, firearm instructor, educator, and enthusiastic Second Amendment proponent, David Lombardo. Welcome to On Target Radio, America's voice for the Second Amendment. I'm David Lombardo, and sitting across the council from me is my co-host, Tim Dalen. Say hello, Tim. We are here. We are here, and uh, tragedies of the uh, video program notwithstanding, we have more than one camera this time. Yes, we have more than one camera. We're trying to put cameras on our guests, so uh, if you're watching our video feed at Ustream.tv, hopefully we won't make you dizzy flipping back and forth, if we can get them to work. (laughs) And and I also want to say that we miss... The Pinker. He wasn't on the, in the previous hour. He's always such a good friend and lets us come on. And uh, we miss him, but Illini oh. basketball overran his program. Yeah, I, uh, I missed his insults tonight. He always, uh, very good naturedly, <laughs> has to throw one my way when we come in, but oh, I, yeah. I love him for it. Yeah, no, the Pinker's uh, he's done a lot to help us. Uh, yes, anyway, yes. We're here. Tim and I are here every Sunday night at 9 to 10 p.m. talking about all things Second Amendment. Uh, we had. Uh, on Target Radio are shocked at the terrible tragedy that happened in Connecticut this past week, and our prayers go out to the families of the victims. However, we're very disappointed that once again, liberal politicians would use such a horrific event to further their own anti-Second Amendment agenda. Like vultures, liberal politicians once again circle a tragedy, spouting the need for more laws. By one account, that twisted individual broke over 40 laws. What additional law would have prevented Adam Lanza from committing such an atrocity? Mayor Manuel, you know perfectly well that the demented Adam Lanza in no way reflects the millions of law-abiding citizens who want to be able to protect themselves. While you and Governor Quinn are surrounded by armed bodyguards, you seek to deny the very people you are elected to represent the right to protect themselves from someone just like Adam Lanza. And this in a city where you're unable to control a staggering violent crime rate, putting everyday citizens at risk for just going to dinner on the Magnificent Mile. Mr. Mayor, you are at best disingenuous, because you know full well there isn't one shred of evidence that shows armed law-abiding citizens are in any way a threat to society. And tonight, we're going to talk about that right. Tonight, we're going to talk about Shepard v. Madigan and Illinois Concealed Carry. We'll take your questions or comments at 312-642-5600 or go to Facebook, like our page on Target Radio, and ask a question there. In our studio tonight, we have Don Moran, president of the Illinois State Rifle Association, and Doug Mayhall, first vice president. And calling in later during the show will be Richard Pearson, the executive director of the ISRA, and Walter Maxson, a Chicago-based attorney specializing in Second Amendment issues. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you also. I'm glad to be here. Um, Let's start with what exactly was Moore and Shepard et al. versus Madigan. What was that about? Well, it was a facial challenge to portions of the unlawful use of weapons statute in Illinois. Uh, Illinois is the only state in the United States that completely prohibits the carrying of defensive firearms outside the home. So as a result of that, uh, the it, that went all the way through the Illinois court system and got up to the uh, U.S. Court of Appeals in the 7th District. Is that right? Actually, it's, it started in the U.S. District Court in Southern Illinois. So it was never ah. in a state court system. It was always in a federal court system. Okay. So how, how did that work out? Well, in the lower courts, the, the uh, case was dismissed. They said that we had uh, that we were arguing about something that didn't exist, a right to carry a firearm outside the home. Uh, the Seventh U.S. Court of Appeals found differently. Uh, they said that there is a core right to the Second Amendment, carrying a firearm outside the home for self-defense. We'll, we'll see... Uh, what they did is they found that the law was unconstitutional. Now, this isn't the whole UUW statute. It's just certain paragraphs and sections of the UUW statute that goes to f- carrying a firearm outside the home. Um, the law has been found to be unconstitutional, but they remanded this thing back to the lower court to issue a permanent injunction against the state for enforcing it, but they stayed that decision for 180 days. 
So for 180 days, the next six months, the law will be enforced just as it always was. Nothing's changed. So right now, there's no change at all? Correct. Okay. What What's going to happen? For instance, would, would Madigan... Uh, is she, is she likely to appeal this? Well, she's got a she's got a couple of choices. She's got three choices. She could appeal it to the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, and the U.S. Supreme Court only takes cases that they decide to take. Um, generally, they'll take cases where there's a conflict between the. U.S. Uh, Court of Appeals, if the different districts have a problem, uh, they don't agree, then it's more likely that the court will take it up, although that's not a guarantee that they would take it up. Um, she could ask for an en blanc review of the appeal or of the the Seventh Court of Appeals decision where the entire court would get together instead of just three of the judges or justices, all of the justices on the panel would, would sit down and do that. Um, or she could accept the decision as it was written, and we could get the legislature to move on and, and pass a bill in Illinois that allows concealed carry. How many justices are there? Wild guess. <laughs> <laughs> how many How many were on this case? Uh, three. So presumably there's more than three. Yes. We don't have a feel for what the leanings are of them all? I don't, you know, it's... In my mind, it doesn't make any difference um, because this case is it's 180 days. She could ask for it. The court could go back, and they could extend the stay on their decision. But this isn't the only case that's out there. Uh, Moore, and, Moore versus Madigan and Shepard versus Madigan were two separate cases that were uh, brought in federal court. At the same time, there's a case that parallels these cases that's before the Illinois Supreme Court right now called Aguilar. And uh, if they get a decision on Aguilar, their only choice at that matter will be to appeal it to the U.S. Supreme Court if they don't agree with the decision. The best thing for them to do at this point is just move the ball, get the legislature to act, and pass a responsible bill. I, I think that's the important thing. She can keep wasting taxpayers' money to keep fighting these things, but with the Heller case, the McDonald case, it, it's very obvious to everybody that these laws are legal and, or the laws now are illegal, and we need to get a change to do the Second Amendment as, as it was written. And at some point we're going to win, but it just takes a lot of money on their part and our part, and we ought to get on with this. And Well, they have a bottomless pit of money. Yeah, but we're, we're paying for it, unfortunately. No, I'm talking taxes. about the state. The that's state what, has that's a bottom. What I mean. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, well, so yes, we are. Take we it pay from us. So. Sure. Uh, you're listening to On Target Radio. This is AM560 WIND. And this evening we are talking about um, the Shepard v. Madigan uh, case and the resulting Illinois possibility for Illinois carry. It looks pretty good. Who was more? Shepard, I think most people know Shepard was, was the woman who uh, was fully qualified to own a firearm. She was. Uh, 70-some years old, and was literally beaten where she volunteered working in a church. She had a Utah concealed carry, was trained, had a firearm, but couldn't couldn't have it with her. But who who was Moore? Michael Moore. He's a, uh, I believe he's from downstate, um, but uh, he's not the Michael Moore, the no, movie that's producer, a- <laughs> obviously. Um, but uh, he was he's just a private citizen that uh, brought this action. Uh, he's supported by the Second Amendment Foundation in his case. Uh, the Shepard case was um, the plaintiffs in that case were Mary Shepard and the uh, National Rifle Association, the Illinois State Rifle Association. Do they then, because of similarity, package them together? Is that how that works? Or They were originally filed in separate courts with separate plaintiffs, and it's, it's kind of... Uh, it's it's almost comical. Uh, they had two separate cases in two separate courts, and they were both uh, moved to the U.S. Court of Appeals. And Lisa Madigan, the Attorney General in Illinois, went to the U.S. Court of Appeals and asked for them to uh, set our case, Shepard versus Madigan, aside and just hold it until they heard more. And they claimed that to argue both cases for them would be a lot of duplication and extra work, and it would cost a lot of money and time. And And uh, the court found that if the cases were so much identical that uh, the arguments were duplicates, that they could hear both cases at the same time. And what they did is they sort of combined the two cases, but they allowed both cases to keep their 
individual attorneys and representatives, and so they didn't make them, they didn't really combine the cases. They, they combined it but kept them separately. Uh, Randy asked on Facebook, what are the chances that politicians here in Illinois uh, would appeal the recent verdict on the concealed carry ban? We actually covered that. It wouldn't be the politicians. It would have to be the Attorney General, Lisa Madigan, and, yep. and, and we did already uh, talk about that. Uh, we're taking um, your calls at 312-642-5600 or go to uh, the Facebook page on Target Radio, like us, and you can ask a question there. Uh, After this break, we will uh, come back and we are going to have uh, Richard Pearson with us, who is the executive director of the Illinois State Rifle Association. And we'll be talking uh, with Richard and uh, again with Don Moran and uh, Doug Mayhall about uh, Illinois concealed carry, which appears to be looming on the horizon one way or the other. We'll be right back. Attention firearm owners or those considering exercising your Second Amendment rights. I want to tell you about Illinois Gun Works. From Foyd services and new firearm purchases to gunsmith services and an indoor shooting range, Don and his staff will assist you without attitude or pressure. Need training? Illinois Gun Works popular Illinois Responsible Firearm Owners class teaches you the regulations to legally defend yourself, own, and transport your firearm. There's a required class for a Chicago firearm permit and popular new shooter familiar familiarization class, including one for women. Now, I took this class and urge you to reserve your spot fast for this fun class. Illinois Gun Works offers a wide selection of training and certification classes, from security work to those just considering ownership, even special group classes. Illinois Gun Works Chicagoland's full-service firearm headquarters is located on Grand Avenue, just a block west of Harlem in Elmwood Park. Call 708-452-0040 or visit IllinoisGunWorks.com. That's 708-452-0040. You're listening to On Target Radio on AM560 WIND with David Lombardo. Here's David with more interesting conversation on firearms, safety, your Second Amendment rights, and much more. To participate, call the studio at 312-642-5600. And we're back. Tim and I would like to... Have you join us at the Gotcha Outdoors Adventure Sports Show Saturday and Sunday, January 5th and 6th in Kankakee. There will be thousands of dollars in prizes at great kids' activities such as archery and shooting slingshots with world record holder and slingshot expert Chief AJ. You won't want to miss the reptile rampage, seeing the live deer, or visiting the huge exhibitor hall with over 70 vendors. There are also lots of informative seminars and great food. Special guests include Spiritual Outdoor Adventures TV host Jimmy Seitz and the Takedown Outdoors Pro staff. Best of all, it's affordable family entertainment with adult admission of only $5, senior 4 kids 7 to 16 $3, and under 6 get in free. Be sure to join the on-target radio team at the Gotcha Outdoors Adventure Sports Show Saturday and Sunday, January 5th and 6th at the Kankakee First Church in Kankakee. For further information, visit gotchaoutdoors.com or call 815-933-1000. That's 815-933-1000. Tim and I will see you there. Right, Tim? Yes, we will. We'll be there, and hopefully everybody will come down and say hi and uh, bring us cookies or Christmas candy something. or something. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, us- even though it's after. Whatever you have left over from Christmas, bring it down. Good we'll cheer. take care of it for you. Good cheer indeed. And uh, now, uh, appearing here on this show as a call-in guest, we have Richard Pearson. Richard, uh, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing uh, this is my, my third uh, third radio program today. <laughs> See, it's what happens when you're famous. Yeah, or infamous. Or infamous, one or the other. I'm Richard, get, I'm, get, I'm getting a lot of love notes from people. I'm sure you are. Richard is uh, is the executive director of the Illinois State Rifle Association. We have a question. If the legislature fails to act on on the uh, decision, what happens at that point? Well, this is this is a guess, of course, but my guess is that the uh, court will offer a, uh, a another uh, time period in which they can uh, comply. If they don't, you mean they would give them essentially give them a pass? No, they would. It works just like any other court. You give them a couple couple passes. You know, this will be a lot shorter. Might require a special session. And then if that, nothing happens, then the, the court will probably act. And it wouldn't be in the best interest of anybody for that to happen. Well, the common wisdom, and of course we all know what that's about, but the common <laughs> wisdom is 
uh, people have been telling me with great authority, even though they are not in a position to have any great authority, that if the 180-day mark passes, um, everybody we talk to says, that's it, we all get to carry concealed, it's over, and we can do anything we want. Uh, that's not true. The uh, court decision uh, uh, addressed only the uh, unlawful use of weapons statute, but it didn't uh, address all the nuances associated with that, such as uh, you know where you can carry, when you can carry, can local governments have authority, so forth and so on. So all that has to be worked out. See, I, I and this is what I've been telling people. I. I I'm getting this on Facebook. I have gotten phone calls. I mean, you can well imagine uh, we have people want to sign up to take classes. I mean, everyone is chopping at the bit. But, you know, the concept that at the end of 180 days, suddenly there would be carte blanche for everybody in the state of Illinois to carry a firearm without any training, without any regulations. I mean, it just was very difficult for me to, to possibly accept that. Well, um, the uh, you know, most people are thinking about what happened in Arizona. But Arizona had passed a concealed carry law. And then they relaxed the law, but the but the regulations were all in place. Okay, we're not in that position. We have no 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 regulations, nothing. So that that it's not going to happen in the same way. We have uh, someone on Facebook, uh, Nicholas, who said, um, "How come with the recent tragedy and concealed carry so close for Illinois gun advocates? Uh, why is it that they're not speaking out more and trying to educate the public?" and explain people's rights. It seems that all gun advocates sit quietly in regard to public announcement during these times instead of speaking out. How would you address that? Well, we've we've been speaking out. If you got the uh, latest uh, uh, email alert uh, tonight, it talked about the the tragedy and so forth and so on. So we have been speaking out about it, but but others have been silent on it because they don't know quite what to say at this point because all the facts aren't really there. So, Richard, you're saying that uh, if somebody who's not an Illinois State Rifle Association member, if they would go to your website, they could uh, read these announcements that you're talking about? Right. They could even join there. Yes, they could. Well, and, <laughs> and Richard, as you know, and Don and Doug, as you know, Tim and I are always big advocates of the ISRA. And, and when we do our seminar, Home Protection Concealed Carry, I'm a life member of the NRA. I know Tim's a member. I don't know if you're a life member, but I know you're a member. But we always I'm always a life say, member of the ISRA. We always say the one organization that looks out for people who live in the state of Illinois is the Illinois State Rifle Association, and we're always pitching it because for this exact reason. The, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically the NRA gets involved if there's national implication, but if it's a state thing, they tend to disappear, right? Well, no, I can't say they disappear at all. Well, but, I don't mean uh, disappear. I'd but, say. Uh, but uh, I'll, you know. I'll, I'll say this, Rich. I'll say that. If you spend your money with the Illinois State Rifle Association, your money will be invested in your rights in Illinois. That's right. We probably won't do much for the people in Alaska, but then we don't need to do much for them. They have them all. <laughs> and they can hide anywhere. I mean, it's just <laughs> it's a vast yeah. wilderness. So so here's a, the other question. Um, and by the way, we're you're listening to uh, On Target Radio, AM 560 WIND. We're talking about Illinois Concealed Carry. Uh, Rich, the other question is, what kind of limitations could the state legislature impose on a concealed carry? Well, they would have to put, uh, they, could, they could actually propose anything, but it would have to be reasonable or they'd be back in, in, the, in court. So, uh, but they, they can, uh, you know, they can, they can determine the fees, they can determine the training, you know, all of which we'll have input on, of course. You know, the length of licensing where you can and can't carry concealed, that sort of thing. All that has to be spelled out in the law. Now, given that, we know Chicago, Cook County have always been draconian on their gun control laws. Is this going to be a uniform policy across the state of Illinois, or will Rahm Emanuel be able to override it, or will uh, Preckwink will be able to override it and make up their own rules? Well, we, we want a uniform policy across the state of Illinois. If you look at the court decision, the court decision didn't cut out the city of Chicago. It says every place. They Chicago, specifically the mentioned the city of Chicago. I'm sorry? They specifically mentioned yeah, the city exactly. of Chicago. Exactly. They used uh, Chicago as an example of why you need concealed carry. Charles on uh, Facebook said, as someone who travels across the southern tip of Illinois heading east, once the dust settles, 
How does this affect the way I store my firearm in my vehicle or carry, for that matter, while traveling through your state? He doesn't say where he's from, but the assumption is that he's an out-of-state resident who has a concealed carry permit. Well, what he's looking for is reciprocity there, and uh, there's a couple interesting things about reciprocity. Of course, we would like to put that in the bill, but also if Illinois, and I should say when Illinois, it's not if, when Illinois uh, gets a concealed carry then it's a chance that the national reciprocity bill may move also, which would be nice for everybody. So, and that's in the in the Congress now, right? Yeah, it's in Congress, but it's just laying there, not doing anything. But uh, one of the problems, one of the flies in the ointment is is uh, Illinois. I guess when I look at the overall political makeup today in the state of Illinois, and in the in the Congress. I don't understand how this is even happening. I mean, everybody that is in control is dead set against anything to do with firearms. I mean, how are we how are we able to do this? Well, one thing is the Illinois State Rifle Association absolutely never gives up. Okay, um, you know we make a pit bull look like a like a uh, um, a uh, snouter. <laughs> so, but we we sink our teeth in. We're not going anywhere. And uh, so we, we've been fighting hard. We, we fight on every kind of front that we can find to fight on. But one of the things that happened a few years ago, Don, and, and uh, the rest of us asked the membership if we would like to go into the court system and try to litigate our rights. And the uh, membership said yes. And so we've been doing that. We've been a leader in the, uh, in the United States uh, on court cases. There's no other state organization that's been involved in more court cases than we have. And that money comes from your membership, is that correct? That's exactly correct. right. Which is all the more reason for $25 for one year. Uh, you know, to me, that's an insurance policy. Anybody that owns a firearm that is not a member of the ISRA, I'm carrying your freight, brother. We're going to be back. Richard, thank you very much for being with us this evening. All right. And we will be back with more On Target Radio in just a few moments. Chuck's Gun Shop proudly serves Riverdale and the surrounding communities. Conveniently located near the 142nd Street exit of the Bishop Ford Expressway, Chuck's Gun Shop is staffed by friendly, skilled professionals who will help guide a first-time shooter and assist you in obtaining a State of Illinois firearm owner's identification card. Chuck offers a full line of new handguns, rifles, shotguns, knives, and accessories. Chuck's also buys, sells, and trades used firearms and has a gunsmith on location that will provide expert care for your favorite firearm. Chuck's features a six-lane indoor shooting range. Bring your own firearm or rent one from their wide assortment. If you live in Chicago, Chuck's Gun Shop offers the required Chicago firearms permit course. Chuck's Gun Shop is open Monday through Saturday and located at 14310 Indiana Avenue in Riverdale. Visit their website, chucksgunshop.net or call 708-849-4455. That's 708-849-4455. Chuck's Gun Shop, serving Riverdale and surrounding communities. Hi, I'm David Lombardo, host of On Target Radio. You're living proof that radio advertising reaches listeners. In the two years I've been advertising on AM560 WIND, Safer USA grew from 300 students a year to over 1,200. By coupling our On Target Radio broadcast with our Facebook page, we found our audience is steadily growing, and in only two months it appears we've exceeded 5,000 listeners. Over 34% are in the age group 25 to 34, 26% are 35 to 44. We have listeners from Rockford to Western Michigan and Southern Wisconsin to St. Louis. Thanks to live streaming on the internet, we also have listeners as far away as Germany, Japan, and New Zealand. On Target Radio is offering low-cost sponsorship opportunities on Chicago's premier conservative talk radio station. Advertising on AM 560 WIND has worked for Safer USA. Let me show you how it can work for you. Call 815-744-5487. Join the On Target Radio team today at 815 815- Seven four four five four eight seven. We now return to On Target on AM560 WIND. If you have a question or opinion, the studio line is 312-642-5600. Now, here's your host, firearm expert and educator, David Lombardo. 
We're back with more on Target Radio and Bill from Wauwatosa, Wisconsin. What have you got to ask, Bill? Hey. We have a, a now a concealed carry permit in the state of Wisconsin, I guess as of last year. If I do not have a concealed carry permit myself and I shoot an intruder breaking into my home at night, what's my legal exposure? Well, Bill, unfortunately, we're not attorneys, and you live in a different state. So, I mean, I wouldn't even hazard a guess. And okay. an attorney, you would make him cringe asking that question unless you were paying probably about 100 bucks an hour or more. So it isn't something we can really answer. But if that's a serious question, you really should consult an attorney in your home state. Don, okay, you guys. agree with that? Appreciate it. Thank you for a good show. You are more than welcome. Thank you very much for listening. And now it's that magic moment, that time... <laughs> when Tim will do his fighting back segment. And after this, we have a very special moment coming up. <laughs> a very special moment. A gunman walked into a Sunoco gas station in Ohio last week, pointed a gun at two workers, and demanded money. One of the responding police officers after the fact said it was just your normal robbery, you know, give me money. It was normal, that is, just until the suspect got behind the counter while confronting the victims, and the victims pulled their own guns, a forty caliber handgun and a shotgun. The victims fired multiple shots at the suspect during the course of the robbery, resulting in the bad guy's death. One regular customer of the gas station said, everybody knows they have guns. That's why I was surprised someone tried to rob them. It doesn't make sense. This is not the best neighborhood. This is a perfect example of the good guys fighting back. And one other thing, I just read this morning where a business owner in New Zealand is asking the government to allow the employees of his armored car business to carry firearms. You see, in New Zealand, it isn't legal for a security guard or even most police to be armed. His drivers have been held up at gunpoint 36 times this year. Armored cars delivering money to banks. You've probably heard the anti-gunners in this country spouting the gun owners saying of, if you take if you uh, take away guns, only the bad guys will have guns. Is old, tired, and not true. The anti-gunners say that all the time. Yeah, right. Ask New Zealand how that's working for them. This has been Fighting Back, brought to you by the Illinois State Rifle Association. I think there's a message in there somewhere. And now, we would like to present... Doug Mayall, who is the first vice president of the Illinois State Rifle Association, who is filling in as our announcer to read a commercial. Doug? Okay. For over 100 years, the Illinois State Rifle Association has supported the rights and freedoms of Illinois citizens to keep and bear arms. For over 100 years, the ISRA has supported the use of firearms as a sport for personal protection and as a fundamental aspect of national defense. For over 100 years, the Illinois State Rifle Association has been supporting you. Don't you think it's time you supported them? ISRA.org or 815-635-3198. That's 815-635-3198. The Illinois State Rifle Association is supporting you. You realize you don't get paid for that. Oh, gee. Thank you. That's very good. Well, we, it looks like we got a new, uh, a new announcer, Tim. All right. Yeah. I can go home. There you go. Becky from El Paso, Illinois, wants to know something about if you get if you need a special permit. Becky? Yes, I was wondering, if you're in your car and you're in Illinois and you're going to, let's say, Las Vegas on vacation, would you be required, if we do get concealed carry here in Illinois, would you be required to have a permit for every state that you go across to get to Vegas? Well, here's the thing. A- it, you can transport under federal law, and you guys jump in if you want, but under federal law, you can transport a firearm from any place where you can be in legal possession to any other place where you can be in legal possession, uh, and no intervening jurisdiction can stop you. But here's the caveat. Number one, it has to be unloaded, encased, and locked, and inaccessible. And the second thing is, if you step out of your car, like to stop for the night somewhere in a hotel, if you get out of your car and bring the gun with you, now you're under the jurisdiction of the local authority. As long as it stays in that uh, situation in the vehicle, it's in transit. Does that anybody have anything to add to that? gets real quiet on the other side of this thing. As I understand it, that's correct. Right. Uh, So, Becky, I think that should answer your question, yes? All right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. And we also had a comment from Nicholas on Facebook, and the comment was, um, he wants to know what the position is on training. Uh, is there going to be a minimum number of hours? What are we anticipating? I, there is going to be training involved in whatever bill passes. I'm pretty certain of that. It's, uh, I think that we'll probably see it be eight hours or less, including some range time. And I think that's pretty much what everybody everybody assumes, is it not? I, from the things that I've seen, 
I've never seen any proposed uh, training program that was like really draconian. It all seemed fairly reasonable. That would be reasonable. Yeah, I, I don't I don't see a problem with I've, that. I've seen proposals that were much more stringent than that. Oh, but, seriously? But they didn't get traction, did they? I hope they don't. It's, uh, but, I mean, it's somebody's, there's always a possibility somebody will throw in an amendment and try and get something in there. But, That's true. That always can happen. Uh, John on Facebook, uh, we've got, uh, in fact, we don't. We don't have any time left. We'll come back back to John. (laughs) We'll come back to John. Uh, We'll be back after these messages with more on Target Radio. You're listening to AM560, WIND. And our subject this evening is Illinois Concealed Carry. Yes, it is. For 35 years, Pelcher's Shooter's Supply has served the Lansing area. Pelcher's offers new and used firearm sales, appraisals, and gunsmithing service. Pelcher's new spacious showroom has hundreds of major brand firearms and supplies, and PelcherGuns.com features daily specials. Pelcher's Shooter Supply, on the corner of Ridge Road and Henry Street in downtown Lansing. Online at PELCHERGUNS.com or call 708 474 0662. You're listening to On Target Radio on AM 560 WIND with David Lombardo. Here's David with more interesting conversation on firearms, safety, your Second Amendment rights, and much more. To participate, Call the studio at 312-642-5600. And we have on the line Walter Maxson. Walter is a Chicago-based attorney specializing in Second Amendment issues. Walter, how are you doing this evening? You are recovering from surgery, yes? Yes, uh, but I'm glad to be with you. It's, uh, you know, I've been going stir-crazy here in rehab, but uh, <laughs> doing good. Well, we're glad to hear that you're doing well. I have a question that I've uh, been wanting to ask you, and now that I have you on the phone, here we go. With the this whole UUW being basically going to change, is that going to have any effect on pending charges and and particularly on past convictions? Well, it is. It it most certainly will. As a matter of fact, I had a case that uh, was ready to go to trial. It will go to trial in February. Uh, in DuPage County, and um, it's a, a simple case where someone with a Floyd card had a gun in his automobile, was charged with uh, felony uh, for uh, having a, uh, a gun in uh, a loaded gun in public. Uh, and all he did was he had a magazine in the um, compartment near the um, near the uh, gun. And um, I moved to dismiss on the exact charges, uh, this exact same grounds as in Shepard. The court denied it. I'm sure the court will have to go along now and dismiss the case. And uh, so it's the difference between being a felon and not a felon because the uh, the, uh, the, the statute uh, prohibiting any type of carry or having a loaded gun is now unconstitutional uh, or will be as soon as the uh, opinion goes into effect. So, yes, and then also uh, there are a number of uh, convictions, of course, under the current UUW laws, and I would think that anyone who has a conviction would be able to move to have it vacated. Uh, anyone convicted of a felony or a misdemeanor would be able to uh, petition um, a court and um, seek to have the, uh, their uh, conviction um, vacated and to be, in effect, to uh, have, you know, have a clear record. What happens, to an, what happens to an individual who's incarcerated as a result of that type of a charge? Same exact thing. I mean, this is going to have a, a sweeping effect, I would think, across the board. Anyone who's serving a sentence uh, would be able to come out. And I would also think that they may have an action uh, for being illegally um, uh, a civil rights action or Section 1983 for having been illegally um, um, uh, imprisoned and uh, punished. And uh, so that's going to make for a lot of very interesting litigation, I would think. That could open up a real Pandora's box, couldn't it? Most well, certainly could, and uh, there's there's not a lot of case law on it, but there are cases where um, you know where the um, convictions uh, you know you cannot have a criminal conviction if the statute under which you have been convicted has been declared unconstitutional. You're listening to AM560 WIND. This is On Target Radio, and uh, we're talking with Walter Maxim, a Chicago-based attorney specializing in Second Amendment issues. Walter, the the federal case that's pending challenging the city of Chicago's gun registration and possession, use of guns and all of that, is that going to be at all affected by this? Uh, 
Yes, uh, I have that uh, pending uh, as of the moment, and um, there we're ch- challenging, uh, and the case has been upheld. My complaint has been upheld in federal court uh, against the city of Chicago. Uh, the new gun law that w- was uh, enacted by the city after its uh, ordinance uh, was declared unconstitutional in the McDonald case um, has a number of restrictions, particularly uh, restrictions that uh, allow you to only have a registered gun in your home, and it specifically denies uh, what you uh, to have possession in an area of your own property, not only in public, which now would be unconstitutional, but uh, upon what is called your curtilage, which is uh, an area of property that is in, about, in, a, in and about your own uh, uh, home. In other words, not just in your house or apartment, but your uh, your gangways, your uh, your patio, your um, porch, your um, attached garage, garage etc. Yeah. So yes, uh, that there are a number of provisions that uh, are intertwined uh, with this particular um, issue, and uh, we feel very good. As a matter of fact, I'm amending the complaint uh, for refiling, and uh, we're going to be raising the uh, Shepherd case as additional. Um, additional grounds uh, for uh, knocking out uh, the rest of the remainder of the city's uh, over, uh, overreaching uh, gun ordinance. It would appear that uh, that this is going to have a somewhat of a flattening effect across the entire state. Then I I live in the southwest suburbs, and uh, it's it's a predominantly conservative area, and you know firearm ownership uh, isn't really questioned. It, it appears that one of the effects of this is going to take that and, and sort of flatten it across the entire state. Where even in Chicago, you're going to you're going to be okay. Is that a reasonable thing to say? Well, absolutely. Because uh, for years I've made this argument, and uh, especially in Cook County and uh, the, the northern counties, uh, the courts have sort of looked at me like you know like, like I've had three eyes. <laughs> But, uh, you know, now things have come to pass, and the, uh, the law is, uh, has, uh, has totally shifted with Heller and McDonald and you know, the Seventh Circuit's decision, Ezell, and now this particular case, uh, Shepard. So uh, the courts have to follow the precedent, and they do. I've, um, I've been batting 100 in even Cook County. I've had cases thrown out uh, uh, in um, other counties throughout the state. So, uh, you know good judge has to follow the law and has to um, uphold the uh, constitutional rights. And I've had uh, a number of, uh, I've settled a number of cases and pursued a number of cases, uh, civil rights cases with individuals who uh, have been uh, wrongly prosecuted for having uh, lawful possession of a firearm. Okay, Walter, we got to take a break, but thank you very much for joining us. Okay, thank you for having me. Hi, I'm David Lombardo, host of On Target Radio. You're living proof that radio advertising reaches listeners. In the two years I've been advertising on AM560 WIND, Safer USA grew from 300 students a year to over 1,200. By coupling our On Target Radio broadcast with our Facebook page, we found our audience is steadily growing, and in only two months it appears we've exceeded 5,000 listeners. Over 34% are in the age group 25 to 34, 26% are 35 to 44. We have listeners from Rockford to Western Michigan and Southern Wisconsin to St. Louis. Thanks to live streaming on the internet, we also have listeners as far away as Germany, Japan, and New Zealand. On Target Radio is offering low-cost sponsorship opportunities on Chicago's premier conservative talk radio station. Advertising on AM 560 WIND has worked for Safer USA. Let me show you how it can work for you. Call 815-744-5487. Join the On Target Radio team today at 815-744-5487. You're listening to On Target on AM560 WIND with David Lombardo. Here's David with more interesting conversation on firearms, safety, your Second Amendment rights, and much more. To participate, call the studio at 312-642-5600. We're back with more on... on, I'm going to try this in It's, It's easy for me to say. We're back with more On Target Radio. Don, uh, we only have a few minutes left here, but the Chicago aldermen, Mm -hmm. uh, several of them, have come out with uh, a statement saying essentially that we're going to pass whatever we want, we're not going to allow this, let them take us to the Supreme Court. Have you heard that? I have heard that. I've seen 
on the pr- press conferences and such that uh, where the aldermen have stated that. And what I would caution them is that if they continue to thumb their nose at all these federal court decisions like they did in Ezel and what they're threatening to do again, that uh, they should consider that last year we held a legal symposium at John Marshall Law School in a city where we brought together Section 1983 civil rights attorneys with Second Amendment attorneys. Uh, if they're purposely circumventing people's civil rights just for the sport of circumventing people's civil rights after, and defying a court decision in the hopes that we'll just litigate it and take it to the Supreme Court, I think they should consider what the implications are if someone were to file a Section 1983 suit against them personally. You could actually target specific aldermen? If they've made public statements and said that that's exactly what they're doing is they're circumventing people's civil rights on purpose. I think they open themselves up to litigation and personal liability. What? Doesn't that just turn the heat up? I wish you wouldn't have told them that. Well, I mean, basically, they're, you know, they're cowardly. They hide behind the shield of being an alderman behind the city. If you can actually begin to target individual by individual... I guess what? The city covers their legal fees, but the city's broke. I'm not sure that the city should even be covering their legal fees unless they were to win the case. And ironically, they're able to carry guns now because of their position. Exactly. A lot of people don't know that, but the Chicago City aldermen can carry concealed firearms. Right. Or Chicago politicians that work for fake scam private security companies. Well, thank you, Tim. That was... (laughs) Certainly an indirect response, wasn't it? Yeah. The uh, uh, David on Facebook said, with the president today saying that he would do everything legal in his hands in the next couple of weeks to address the violence problems, what can we expect? We only have uh, just a short period of time here, about a minute, but not much, I would assume. I don't uh, Legally, I don't know what he could do. I mean, he could issue an executive order of some sort and that could be challenged. Um, I don't believe that... Uh, that the wherewithal is there to, to pass sweeping legislation through both houses of Congress. Um, I think the things that need to be addressed, mental illness, uh, treatment of mental illness, stigma related to mental illness, security of our schools is atrocious. Uh, something needs to be done about the security and they, they, of our they schools. Never, they never address those issues. It's no, always about the, guys who own guns legally. You know, it's like, it's like fighting terrorism. You know, they could make a thousand attempts, and if they're successful once, they win. And... You know, people that want to prey on on schools, they're you know exactly. they're, they're gun free zones. No one can protect themselves there, and they're exactly. Well, gentlemen, thank you for being here this evening. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, Don Moran and Doug Mayall. Thanks to Richard Pearson and Walter Maxim for calling in. Thanks to Robin Zeeland, our call screener, our new Jack Diders, our intern. We have our new intern. Go, Jack. There you go. Tim Montague, our tech consultant, George Hoffman on the board. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Illinois Gunworks, Chuck's Gun Shop, Pelcher's Shooter Supply, Illinois State Rifle Association, our website developer, 31 Moons, our new sponsor, Gotcha Outdoors Adventure Sports Show, and, of course, Safer USA. Next week, Close Quarter Defensive Tactics with Nick Faruqi and Barbara Ellers of the Ballistic Fighting Methods. you got to got to tune in for that one. Until then, from Tim and I, Tim, say goodbye. Goodbye. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching uh, on the live channel. And we hope that you'll be back next Sunday at 9 p.m. for more On Target Radio. And thanks, Mike, for making it all possible. Thanks for having us on, Tim and David. Thank Thank you. Oh, thanks, Doug. Thanks, Don, for coming.